The only import calls were in Pakistan, Australia and New Zealand, and Brazil. In each port, visiting was limited, but hundreds came aboard, and their response was tremendous. Task Force One proved its staying power and reliability, its freedom of action, and its complete independence of logistic support. These ships have increased the Navy's mobility, versatility, and effectiveness in protecting the nation's interests. They demonstrated on the long cruise their unlimited range, higher sustained speed, immediacy of response, and reduced vulnerability. When the ships came into port at the journey's end, they had covered more than 30,000 miles in 58 days at sea without replenishment of any kind and without a single nuclear power problem in any ship, in spite of the rugged demands that had been made on them. Well, it's a long way from these scratches on a micro photograph to a task force circumnavigating the world, but the atom has made it. In the decades since Nautilus first got underway, the Navy's nuclear-powered ships have steamed more than eight million miles. In all this time, no nuclear-powered ship has ever failed to meet an operational commitment due to a malfunction of the nuclear propulsion plant. With conventionally fueled ships, mobility depends mainly on fuel supplies. Even in peacetime, a worldwide fuel distribution is required to maintain our sea power. And in wartime, there must be an availability of oil stocks, storage facilities, tankers, and escorts to protect them. Protection is even more necessary during the actual period of replenishment. In heavy weather, refueling is often impossible. At times, this has caused destroyers to turn back for lack of fuel. And sometimes an entire force can be immobilized by an attack on the relatively vulnerable fuel train. But when task forces are nuclear powered, fuel restrictions are ended. The full potential of logistic freedom can be realized. There is no longer a need for fuel availability or for establishing petroleum facilities which has always been a major consideration in setting up advanced bases. In remote areas, the superior mobility of nuclear-powered ships may mean getting to a hot spot quickly enough to prevent a major eruption. The advantages of nuclear propulsion for surface ships were further conclusively demonstrated when the Enterprise and the Bainbridge joined the 7th Fleet off Vietnam on 2 December 1965 marking the first time that nuclear-powered ships entered combat. During the transit from Norfolk, Virginia to Subic Bay in the Philippine Islands, the two ships maintained a speed of advance in excess of 20 knots for the entire 16,000-mile trip, despite the fact that flight operations were conducted for nine days and three nights, arriving with sufficient jet fuel remaining to conduct days of heavy combat operations. The Enterprise, on her second day of operations, demonstrated her high state of readiness following this long transit by setting a new daily record for combat sorties by any aircraft carrier performing in-country support. The capacity for virtually unlimited steaming at high speeds means that hostile areas can be transited quickly Submarine contacts or heavy storms are more easily avoided. Fast retirement can be made from the threat of air attacks. The element of surprise is increased, especially with the elimination of telltale oil. The absence of smokestacks and air intakes makes it possible for nuclear ships to be buttoned up and washed down automatically in the event of atomic, biological, or chemical attack. 
The tremendous reservoir of power in the nuclear reactors is able to meet the constantly increasing electrical demands of communications, radar, sonar, and the naval tactical data systems, as well as the new weapons systems and the requirements of flight deck catapults. Another benefit of nuclear power is greater maneuverability. Instant power, power to move ahead, stop, or back up quickly. Among other advantages, this immediate response minimizes the exposure of a carrier to enemy attack as it comes about to launch or recover aircraft. The results that have been achieved in just the past few years by the Navy and the Atomic Energy Commission with the cooperation of American industry have been spectacular. But we are still just on the threshold of a nuclear age. Knowledge reacting to continuing nuclear discoveries acts as a catalyst in many areas. It is reflected in power plants to produce electricity and to provide fresh water such as this Navy installation at McMurdo Sound in the Antarctic. It stimulates medical and scientific research. At the National Naval Medical Center, Bethesda, special facilities and equipment are dedicated exclusively to nuclear medicine. Here, the Navy trains its own doctors, nurses, and corpsmen in the most advanced techniques. At the present time, we lead the world in nuclear propulsion knowledge. We have proven the superiority of nuclear-powered ships. Out of the unseeable atom, scientists and engineers of the Navy and the Atomic Energy Commission, working with leading industries, have developed and demonstrated the greatest power the world has ever known. What has been achieved is a monument to the men of vision who set their minds and hands to the almost insurmountable problem of isolating and controlling this prime force. They have made the submarine a true submersible. They have created the Polaris missile system as the most potent deterrent to enemy attack. They have opened the frozen seas of the Arctic. They have harnessed the unseen to turn the propellers of ships that can circle the globe without logistic support. And now they are developing higher powered, longer core life reactors for submarines and surface ships. Two reactors, each producing about as much power as four of the Enterprise reactors, and with fuel lasting for approximately 13 years of normal ship operation, will propel the next generation of aircraft carriers to be constructed. New horizons are being revealed in medical and biological science. The way is being shown to new processes for industry. These men of vision have brought into being the vanguard ships of the nuclear navy, a vital force for the future, underway on nuclear power. <laughs>